How's it going, everybody? So today we are going to go over a popular link list space question called add two numbers. This question has been asked at many tech companies, including Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Uber, and a bunch more. So needless to say, this question is definitely good to know. So for this problem, we are given two link lists where each node holds a single number. And with these lists, we must sum them up and return a new list. So for example, if we had the following lists, we would sum these lists up from left to right. We would first do two plus five, which equals seven. We move to the next nodes. We do four plus six, which is 10. And so what this means is we hold a zero in the place of our output node and carry a one to the next nodes. And then we do three plus four plus one, which is eight. So our final output would be seven pointing to zero, pointing to eight. This problem involves the knowledge of linked lists, obviously moving pointers to nodes, iterating over lists, things like that. But it also involves a little bit of math using the division and modulus operators. Also, there are several edge cases in this problem that you must handle. So it definitely tests your problem solving ability to handle a range of input. So let's walk through the algorithm to solve this problem step by step we are going to add the following lists together. First, we're going to have a result node that keeps track of our summed up nodes. Right now, this is just empty. Then we're going to create a variable called carry and exactly how it sounds will tell us if we have a carry or not when summing up the nodes. This will just initialize to zero. Then we will have two pointers, one pointing to the start of list one and one pointing to the start of list two. We will increment these pointers in unison one node at a time. The current values of our pointers are four and two. So we're gonna do four plus two plus our carry, which is zero, and that would just be equal to six. So we're gonna create a node with a value six and add it to our result list. Now we're gonna move both of our pointers forward to eight and five. We do eight plus five plus our carry, which is zero and that would equal 13. What this means is that we are going to have a carry since it is over a value of nine. So this is where a little bit of math comes into play. We take our sum and we do 13 mod 10, which equals three. This means we need to create a node with a value of three and append it to our list. Then we're going to do 13 divided by 10, and this is equal to one. So this will become the new value of our carry for the next computation that we perform. Then we're gonna move both pointers forward again, but now the list two pointer is pointing at null. So we're just going to ignore that pointer. Our list one pointer is still looking at a number nine. So we're gonna do nine plus one, which is our carry, which equals 10. Once again, since the value we computed is greater than nine, that means we will have another carry. So we do 10 mod 10, which equals zero. So we create a node with a value of zero and append it to our list. Then we do 10 divided by 10, which equals one. So that is going to be our new carry once again. We move our list one pointer forward once again, and now we are done iterating over our list, but there is still one more edge case that we have to consider. We still have a carry with a value of one, which means we have to create one more node with a value of one and append it to our list. If our carry was zero by the end of iteration, we would not need to do this step. And by the end, we are left with the following output, six pointing to three, pointing to zero, pointing to one. Okay, so let's implement the code for this solution. We are given two list nodes, L1 and L2. These are pointing to the heads of the list. And then we need to return a list node, which will be the head of our resulting link list. So the first thing we want to do is create a list node called result. And this can just be initialized to anything we want. So we could just put negative one. It really doesn't matter what this value is. And then we're going to create another list node called cur. And this is just going to point to our result. This is the list node that we are going to move as we are adding new results. And then like we talked about, we're going to have a carry. This can just be initialized to zero. And then in terms of the pointers to list one and list two, we can just use our input. So we can say while L1 is not equal to null or L2 is not equal to null. This is where we're going to do the rest of the logic. The reason why it has to be or is because technically the list could be different lengths, but we still need to make sure to sum up all of the nodes. So if we did and, this would not work. So now we can create a sum variable 
And then we're going to check if L1 is equal to null. If L1 is null, that means L2 must have a value. So we can say sum equals L2.val plus our carry. Whatever this carry is, it's only going to be a 0 or a 1. And after we do that computation, we are going to move our list2 pointer forward. So we're going to say L2.next. And we're going to do the same logic for L2. So if L2 is null, then we're going to say sum equals l1.val plus carry, l1 equals l1.next. And now if both of these statements are not true, that means we must have values in both l1 and l2. So we're going to do sum equals l1.val plus l2.val plus our carry. And then we're going to move both of our pointers forward. So l1.next, l2.next. And then when we come out of these if statements, this is where we are going to compute the mod and the division so that we can add the appropriate node to our result. So we could say int num equals sum mod 10. So whatever the value of num is, this is what we're going to add to our result. And then our carry will be sum divided by 10. And this will always be either a 0 or a 1. And then we're going to say cur.next. We're going to create a new list node of num. And then we're going to move this current list node forward. So cur.next. And then when we come out of this while loop, we need to do that extra edge case that we talked about. If our carry is equal to a 1, then we're going to say cur.next equals new list node of 1. And then we just return result.next. Because remember, the head of our result is just negative 1. So if we do dot .next, that is the actual start of our result. So let's make sure the solution works. And it does. So the time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of the max between n and m, where n is the length of list 1 and m is the length of list 2. Each time our algorithm runs, we are going to iterate up to the maximum of the list lengths. Since the lists can be different sizes, we must differentiate the lengths as n and m instead of just saying big O of n. As for our space complexity, it's also going to be big O of the max between n and m. We must create nodes for our output list. The amount of nodes that we create will be the max length between list 1 and list 2. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. I know these leak code questions can be really difficult to solve. If you like my content, definitely consider subscribing and check out my Patreon if you want to support me further. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. You did a good job. Say bye to everybody. Say bye.